So we're talking about solving difference equations. One of the next things that we want to do is introduce some notation that's going to help us compactly write difference equations down. It's what we call the advanced operator notation. And it's this E right here that I have on the chart. What we're going to do is we are going to replace time advances like k plus 1, k plus 2, k plus 3, etc. with E raised to the appropriate power. So for instance, instead of writing down f of k plus 2, we're going to write down e to the 2 times f of k. And this is going to be kind of our shorthand for uh, writing down time advances. So let's do a few examples of this operator notation. Go back and look at some of the difference equations that we've seen in the previous videos and rewrite them in this new notation. All right, so advanced operator notation. So for example, one of the difference equations that we had in the previous videos was something like this. We had the difference equation y of k equals a y of k minus 1 plus f of k. So if we want to rewrite this time domain difference equation using this new operator notation, one of the things I like to do is first I like to get kind of all the y's on one side and all the input signals, whether those are f of k's or x of k's, on the right. And then since the E stands for an advancement, if I have any time delays like k minus 1, k minus 2, and things like that, I need to shift the difference equation to only have k, k plus 1, k plus 2, etc. So to get rid of this k minus 1, I'm going to replace k with k plus 1 and shift this entire equation up by one unit in time. So y of k turns into y of k plus 1. This turns into y of k. f of k turns into f of k plus 1, etc. And now I'm ready to use this new operator notation that we've been discussing. This is a time advanced by 1, so I can rewrite that as e to the 1, or e, times y of k. This has no time advancement, so it's kind of like y of k plus 0, which is e to the 0. e to the 0 is 1, so it's just y of k. And then on the right side, obviously, I can write down a single e for the single time advancement there. After you do this um, operator notation, um, way of writing down the difference equation, one thing that always happens is notice I have all these y of k's now. I can now factor that out and write a single y of k times this term. I could do the same thing on the right side. Right now there's only um, one term, so no factoring is needed, but you could do a very similar thing on the right-hand side. So that was one example. Let's do another um, example real quick. Here is another difference equation that we've seen in previous videos. This is a second order system, and it's already written in terms of time advances, k, k plus 1, k plus 2, etc. So I don't need to do any shifting. I can go ahead and do the operator notation. k plus 2 is e squared. k plus 1 is e to the 1. k plus 0 is e to the 0, which is 1, so I don't even see an e there. And then on the right, k plus 2 I replace with e squared. Again, notice all the common terms that I have here. I have all these y of k's, which I can factor out, and then rewrite as just the factors. e squared plus 1 half e plus 1 fourth y of k equals, and again, I could factor on the right, but there's only one term, so no factoring required. So those are two specific examples of rewriting a difference equation using this operator notation. Let's go ahead and do it very generally. So if you remember, we had some very specific forms for writing down difference equations. One was called the advanced operator form, and one was called the delay operator form. For the advanced operator form, we can take that equation and term by term, write it down using this new notation. If you go back to those videos, um, the advanced operator form had terms, terms like y of k plus n, y of k plus n minus 1, y of k plus n minus 2, etc. So in general, after you've done this process, you're going to end up with an e to the n, an e to the n minus 1, all the way down to e to the 1 and e to the 0. Also, that general form had the coefficients for um, y is written as a sub n minus 1, a sub 1, a sub 0, etc. So you can still do that transformation and then factor out the y of k, and what you're left with is this polynomial right here. If you do the exact same thing on the right side of the equation, very similar things happen. You have e to the n's, e to the n minus 1's, all the way down to e to the 1, e to the 0, along with the b factors. Remember, those were all the coefficients that were weighting the input. So what I have right now is this very compact way of describing a difference equation in terms of really a polynomial in e. This is just a polynomial in the variable e. 
usually when I think of uh, polynomials, I think of, you know, x squareds and x cubes and things like that. But it doesn't have to be x. It can be other uh, variables or letters. So in this case, we have a polynomial in E. And actually, we're going to go ahead and define it as something very specific. The polynomial that weights y of k, we're going to define as q of e. So q of e is a symbol that we mean to represent this polynomial. Similarly, on the other side of the equation, we have a polynomial as well. We're going to define that polynomial to be the polynomial p of e. So if you take those definitions from these new polynomials that we found, we can now very compactly write down a difference equation in this form right here in the green box. Q of e y of k equals p of e f of k. And that's really where we wanted to get to in this video. This is kind of this new, very compact way of describing a difference equation. All you have to do is tell me what these polynomials are. Tell me the q polynomial, tell me the p polynomial. I can write those down. And then since we understand what this e notation means, if we wanted to, we could go back to the actual difference equation itself. However, this form of the polynomials is useful for some other things, and we'll see that in some of the subsequent videos. All right, so that's it for now. Just wanted to introduce some of this operator advanced notation, and we'll start using this more in the videos that follow. Thanks for watching.